Hey everybody, Les Gray here with the Chronicles of Less and Mo podcast. When we started this podcast journey, it was really just a way for us to practice our podcast services that we provide to others. But since then, we've been having a lot of fun, so we figured we keep it going. I'm particularly proud of the last episode we did with Stuart Atwater, who shared a great story. But in this episode, we talk with Mary Johnston. Now, Mary has had a long love affair with Jesus Christ. Mary is a missionary, Mary is a musician, and she has several creative outlets. And I'm really glad that you're here to listen to her story. And with that, here we go. Good afternoon, Mary. How you doing? I'm doing well, and I'm glad to be here. I'm so glad that we get a chance to sit down and talk to one another. Yeah. 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 So, I, you know, I, our podcast is about a, a, a multitude of things, right? Mainly about God and mainly how God has, you know, impacted our life. But before we even get into that, I kind of want you to give me a backstory. If I ask you, how do you describe yourself? Well, tell me about yourself. Can you? Yes. Um, well, um, a daughter, a sister, um, an aunt, mm-hmm. and um, I presently am serving with Global Hope Network International. Okay. And wear a number of hats with them. Okay. Uh, some of it involves missions. Some mm-hmm. of it involves writing, mm-hmm. editing field reports. Mm-hmm. Uh, staff care, yeah, and prayer ministry. So, did you grow up in Orlando? I grew up in New York. New York, yeah. okay, me too. Yeah, I, I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn. How about you? I'm from Queens. Queens royalty. All right, all right, no. all right. here we go. I love it. I love it. We're part no, of Queens. royalty because of Jesus. Gotcha. Um, a little place called Broad Channel. Okay. It was an island between yeah. Rockaway and Howard yeah. Beach. Yeah. Yeah. In Queens, yeah. I have my, my brother lived out in Far Rockaway at one point. So I used to travel out there as a young child. We used to fish off the pier and stuff. And uh, what brought you to Florida? Now, by the way, I was born in Far Rockaway. Oh, okay. Uh, college. <laughs> college. Yeah. Came here in 71. Okay. So I've been it here was, for a few minutes. To uh, UCF, which is now Actually, UCF? Barry, and then transferred to what was then FTU. It was okay. A cup- couple of buildings and a lot of pine trees, yeah. unlike today yeah. when it's either the first or second largest mm-hmm. university in the okay. country now. Okay. Something like that. Career? Tell me. Yeah. Um, career has been um, multifaceted, you know, a lot of variety. Okay. Any, um, any one particular thing stand out the most? Yeah. Uh, time in jail. I taught time in the in jail. jail for 10 and a half years. You know, that's kind of a leading statement. I'm like, well, you were in jail for... <laughs> Incarcerated at some point, you know? yeah. With good behavior, they let me out at three o'clock every afternoon. Okay, so all right, yeah. So that was a, a real privilege because I had more freedom mm-hmm. to share the gospel in jail than yeah. I would have had a, yeah. even though I was working for Orange County Schools. So I know you've had a long love affair, love affair with Jesus. Yes, right. Yes. But tell me, when did you first fall in love with Jesus? Well, the love affair affair continues, but I guess the first uh, would be seven. Okay. But that was more of an awareness of who he was. Mm -hmm. Then there was a diversion of thinking I was the captain of my own life, which is a myth, which is a lie. Yeah. I went through an agnostic period. Really? Yeah. Now, now t- define that for people who don't know. Okay. That's basically saying maybe God exists, maybe he doesn't. I don't really care. Not quite gonna... an atheist who yeah. don't believe that God exists at exactly. all. Exactly. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Okay. okay. But in some ways, it's a difference with, a, a, what is it, a something without a difference. What's that word? Oh, uh, man, you got me. I'm... Anyway, <laughs> anyway. It, you said it well, Les, that, okay. that it, at least it was saying maybe. Maybe. All right. So there's, there's an opening in being yeah, an agnostic. There's, there's a little opening, right? Okay. right. Okay. 
Uh, not that God can't reach atheists, because right. I've heard enough testimonies of atheists who came Amen. to Christ. Amen. But uh, I'm going to share something that happened when I was 15. Okay. It was in an argument with my mom. Mm-hmm. And it was a Saturday night. I was sweeping the floor, and she's in the at the height of the argument, she said, you know, when I was carrying you, the doctor told me to abort you because you were an ectopic pregnancy. Oh. You know, I was mm-hmm. stuck mm-hmm. in the fallopian right. tube. Right. But I prayed. And the argument was over at that point. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if my mom knew it, but that planted a seed about the power of prayer. Mm-hmm. So years later, I'm in a parking lot at Edgewater and Parr. Mm-hmm. Work At that point, I was working for a theater company, Grapefruit Productions, and this lady, Meg Burdick, came mm-hmm. and shared the gospel with me. Mm-hmm. And shortly thereafter, I went to a Billy Graham crusade and made a profession of faith. Mm-hmm. But um, what was it about her sharing? Was it any one particular thing that created this the need, transformation? The need for the gra- the love and the grace of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I had been, had a, God, I was a tough nut to crack. God had sent a lot of people to share the gospel with me, and I mm-hmm. was kind of dismissive. Right. But. I couldn't deny their love, their peace, their joy. And these were things that I didn't have. Right. You know, it was a right. miserable right. time in my life. Right. How old were you about this time? Tw- 24. Did I, did you, you probably said it and I missed it. But, no, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I don't know that I did. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so that was a real turning point. So in that, in that uh, transformation or um, acceptance, how did, how did that impact your behavior? I mean, what were, you, what were you like before and what were you like after? Oh, I wanted to win an argument at any price. I was very prideful. Okay. You know, just full of arrogance. Yeah. And um, had a very uh, short fuse, you know. Yeah. Got angry at, at, the, at the drop of a hat, you right. know what I'm saying? Just, right. Just, so it... God's still working on me, but yeah. that area has changed a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, that I've seen a lot of healing, mm-hmm. growth, mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, you can probably relate less. Mm-hmm. The more aware we are of his love and forgiveness yeah. toward us, yeah. the easier it gets to give it out to others. Amen. You know? Amen. So. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So um, you went to Billy Graham. Yep. Gave your profession. Yes. Did you receive di- discipleship at the time? How, how did? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was- um, interesting journey. Um, I thought, well, Jesus was Jewish. I'm mm-hmm. going to find a Messianic Jewish synagogue, which I did. Okay. Um, the problem was we Got off into legalism. Okay. So you gotta work for your salvation. Is that legalism? Yeah. I think that's yeah. Right, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but God used that yeah. because now when I witness to Jewish people, I have, yeah. you know, he's given me some background in that. Gotcha. Gotcha. That nothing has to be wasted in God's economy, right? Right. Right. Yeah. So at that point, you're 24, you're, you're starting on your road to the di- discipleship and going through what? We, I like to call the road to it being a fully devoted follower of Christ. Yes. Right? So, yes. So you're working mm-hmm. career. You're in your, you in your career at this point in the performing arts. Yes. Right. Yes. So what, what, what are, what were you doing at that time in terms of performance? Well, I was in a few plays. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you have dreams for being uh, performer, actress, um, I'm more of, a, more of a musician. Musician, yeah, okay. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, God continues to use that gift. Yeah. And I want to give my parents their due. They mm-hmm. were very um, persevering with yeah. me. Yeah. I quit piano seven times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and yet this morning he let me use it. Okay. At a gathering. Uh huh. You know. And he's given me songs, you know. 
I got to see you perform once when you were having lunch with Monet and and you did Amazing Grace at my request. And we, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick that video in somewhere in this program so everybody can see it because oh. it was it was it was a good moment. Oh. It was a good moment. I appreciate that. Oh. Well, um, right. uh, his his grace has led to many good moments in yeah. our lives, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So you come from a big family? Yes. Yeah. We, eight, we were eight. Some eight. of us are in heaven now. Yeah. yeah. You know, my brothers and sisters. But, um, yeah, it was uh, my parents, they, they were very good about modeling prayer. Yeah. You know? And so, so, so here's, here's a good question I, I like to ask folks, right? Because I, I, I do think that, you know, when we accept Christ, sooner he's going to have an outward impact on our life. He's going to change a few things for us. So two questions. He, he, one, I, actually one question. I know you said he changed the prideful behavior, right? Was there ever a time in since 24 that you kind of fell away from Jesus and Yes. You know, there there's some times where I didn't appreciate his word, mm -hmm. uh, where I got too busy doing my own thing. Yeah, yeah. And he had his ways of always bringing me back, though. Yeah. You know, I, you yeah. think of that, I think of him as, as not only the good shepherd, the great shepherd, as yeah. Peter calls him. Right, right. And... Um, he did that through other people, different mm -hmm. mentors mm -hmm. that helped get me on the right path. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of my worst sins, and it kind of reminds me of Israel, mm -hmm. sometimes I'd make idols of people. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is when you put somebody up on a pedestal, pedestals yeah. are good for falling off of and hitting yeah. people in the head with. Yeah. And God let that happen, right. which I can thank him for now right you know because right. it showed me how wrong i was right that he deserves that first place in our right. hearts are you are you so you when you came down here for college you've been here ever since yes right yes and um i was in miami though for oh, you were in three miami. first three years yeah and, and what point did you come to orlando 74 mm -hmm. i uh interestingly i had come in august of 71 and i got a letter in college saying the family was moving on October 1st to Orlando. Okay. And that was the day that Disney opened. So okay. it was the same day that my family arrived and mm -hmm. it turned out to be a good move for both. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look yeah. at Disney, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Disney, yeah. Is, Disney has thrived since it's been here. Yeah. And a lot of people have thrived because of that too. True. The whole, True. The whole city. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit, right? Um, you have... If, your career, or, or would you describe your as having a career? I mean, tell me what if if there was a so so let me let me rephrase this. Right now, I know you, and we've met recently, so I consider you a fully devoted follower of Christ. Right now, that's that's right. But there's a journey for everyone, right? So every time I see you, I speak with you. Molly talks about you. Jesus is at the forefront uh -huh. of your language, and that's that's a testament to what He's done for you. But at what point in your journey did you is is there a mark in the in the in the, in the sand where you became like um, not quite fully devoted, too fully devoted? And if so, what what, what do you think caused that? Mm. At what point did you like fully dedicate yourself to him? Mm. This is a tough question for me, Les. Mm -hmm. uh, because there's been a lot of rededication. Yeah. Um. So I can't narrow it down to one time. Yeah, yeah. But something that I learned that might be helpful to yeah. people who are going to yeah. be mm -hmm. partaking in this podcast. Sure. It's something I learned a few years ago, not that long ago. Uh -huh. Preach the gospel to yourself every day. Oh, okay. And that keeps you fully devoted to Jesus. And um, share the gospel as often as possible. Yeah, and I like to do that daily. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's because you you're making a difference in people's lives and leaving the results to Him. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of Christians are afraid to share the gospel. Yeah, and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. But in 1997, God gave me uh, an icebreaker. Okay. 
And it's a simple question. Have you heard the good news? Now, do I always use that exact statement? No. No. Sometimes I'll ask people, especially if they're elderly, Mm -hmm. do you know where you're going after you leave this life? Right. You know? Right. And there's just many ways to share the gospel that are not that hard. Right. You know, we Mm -hmm. can overthink it and we can make it about us, but it's really not about us. It's about loving God and loving others. When I hear you, I I, I hear a lot of... uh joy and you know ease in sharing the gospel it, was there was there a hard process in sharing the gospel through all, I mean is there uh, is there one particular moment that kind of stands out where you're like man this is tough I, I'm like uh, uh sometimes there still is yeah like with certain you know family members okay it's harder yep. and yep. I think of Jesus you know, going back to Nazareth. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> with not without honor. Yeah, anyway, mm-hmm. and they know the good, the bad, and the ugly about me. So right. it's harder for them, I guess, to receive from right. me. And God right. may use somebody else. Right. And I don't care. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be me. Right. I just want to see them know his love and grace and salvation. Right. right. But back to the question about was there a, a heart moment? I think when I heard that verse, he that loves much, he that he's that's been forgiven much loves much. Okay. And I feel like God's forgiven me of all ten. Yeah. I haven't physically murdered anybody, but I've had <laughs> hatred in my heart. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me yeah. and Mo had a had a conversation about slapping people because sometimes it just feel you feel like they need it. And we were going through all the little litanies of type of slaps, backhand slap, forehand slap. Anyway. <laughs> She woke up one morning and feeling like, man, I just feel like I need to slap somebody. It's like, well, don't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think we can all relate to that. Yeah. I know for me when um, I've only been saved for probably about maybe 12 years now, but early on, I volunteered a lot on different committees and it was always, you know, I had initially I had an expectation that you know, working with Christians was going to be better than working with anyone, but she bite sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, <laughs> the fact that we're, yeah, we're all human. So, yeah. you know, part of me was, was, uh, man, what is this? This is even harder than in corporate America for goodness sake. But, you know, somebody told me that we're all sinful. We all need forgiveness and even Christians. Mm-hmm. Right. So nobody's perfect. So, yeah. So, um, we talk a lot about creativity here, and I know that I got to see your piano and vocal powers. Have you always been both? No, I was. Uh, but singing was something that for 25 years I never did. Wow. Yeah, I misunderstood something my mom said, mm-hmm. and I took it as, "Oh, I can play the piano, but I can't sing." Wow. Okay. Uh, but later in life, she made this comment about if only the Best birds in the forest sang it would be the off, awfully quiet forest. And that kind of liberated me. Wow, okay. Yeah, and then that verse that says, make a joyful noise yeah. unto the Lord, yeah. that liberated me some more. Yeah. So now I really enjoy singing. Yes. I really like it. Awesome, awesome. So. What, what the, the, joy, the, um, the impact that your singing has on other people, have you seen it, um, how, how's it, have you seen it make people feel? Does that make sense? Yes. Um, I've seen it bring some joy to people. Mm -hmm. And um, at other times, I think they... (laughs) They might have the opposite (laughs) reaction, like, will you be quiet? (laughs) But God can use both. You know, he keeps us humble. Right, right. And was that's it, a good thing. Were you were you uh, doing either? Prof- well, singing is kind of recent. I mean, yeah, many- singing is more recent. Okay, but, but- and, and professionally, uh, mm-hmm. piano. Mm-hmm. Uh, that asked to sing at a, a wedding once, mm-hmm. you know, but mainly piano. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So, um, what's next, right? We, we don't know, none of us know how long we have here. So I always ask this question, you know, um, like Mo's about to retire, a few friends retire, and it's always like, what's next? Mm. How, how what, what do you hope for yourself? What do you hope for the years to come? This is a good question. I'm, I'm praying, Lord, 
may my latter days be better than my former days. Yeah. Would you help me finish strong in you? Yeah. Would you help me lead more people into the family of God? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm no spring chicken, Mm -hmm. but I'm very excited about the winter of my life because I know it's followed by the spring. Yes, yes, (laughs) yes. And I think of people in the in God's Word that were up in years. Yeah, you know, Caleb was eighty-five when he used him. Moses was eighty. Right. I'm not up there, but um, Mm -hmm. that's down the road. Right. If if God grants me that, yeah. But um, so. Every day is an opportunity. Yeah, you know. Yeah. What about musically? I mean, is there any any uh, um, goals or aspirations? Yes. All the songs he's given me, I want. I'm eager because I don't think he just gave them to me for me. Mm-hmm. They're worship songs. Mm-hmm. So I had an opportunity to share some with our worship leader at church, and mm-hmm. he was apparently blessed by them. So. Okay. And these, know, are, these God, are original? They're originals, but mm-hmm. I feel like God downloaded them into my spirit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, I do. I yeah, do. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, I'm a, I probably spend way too much time on social media, but there, there are certain videos where people who are blessed, one, blessed with the talent, and two, you, you just see them and they're, they're, they're singing and it sounds wonderful, but their face and their body motion, you know, it makes you feel like they're just so absorbed in this feeling of singing this noise, making this noise that's so joyful for them and everyone else. Yeah. You know, one day we're going to get together and I'm going to capture you in one of those things uh, and see how, I would see, look forward you know, to that. Cause it, I just, I, I just want to f- find singers that create that feeling and this between the sound and the image combined, it, it just creates a, a thing that I just can't, I, you know, me and my family, I feel like I come from a family of photographers. My sisters, for some reason, my sisters and nephews, they take pretty good pictures with their phones and stuff. So I say it's in our DNA. Yeah. But uh, they, um, you know, they they have this talent. And I think that when we are seeing this talent, that we are truly best. And, you know, because when you're singing or you're taking pictures or doing things, you're really expressing an outlet that blesses people. So one, one, one more question. Um, uh, man, I lost my train of thought, but forgive me. You know, I'm having a senior moment (laughs) as as we say, Understood. but you know, when it comes to, um, singing, oh, outlets, right? So that, that that's the phrase that's in my head. I know music, playing a piano is a creative outlet. Singing is also a creative outlet. Do you have other creative outlets um writing writing okay yeah All and right. that's something that's come later in life okay yeah started just about five years ago mm-hmm. and god lets me write a devotional once a week called encouragement mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it always starts with the word okay all right I figured he spoke the universe into existence with the word yeah i'm gonna yeah. use that as a springboard to start a devotional right and by his grace, yeah. he gives me something every week to share. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I feel that way about pictures and video. My my family has this phrase that if 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 there's if a picture wasn't taken of it, it didn't happen. Right. <laughs> and it, and uh Monet and I recently went to a comedy show, Dave Chappelle. Yeah. And um yeah. and uh they locked up our phones. And I get it, right? Professionally, I get it. You know, you protect your intellectual property. Sure. You don't want everything all out in the in the internet for you True. without your control. True. But man, I all I have is my memories. Mm-hmm. And it was a shock because I don't have any pictures to go with my me- <laughs> memories. So um, I know that, you know, when you write and sing and stuff like that, does, do you re- ever record, have you ever been recorded professionally or anything um, like that? I had to play, take me out to the ball game professionally, Okay, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that took a lot of takes, but, yeah. but, um, uh, yeah, I, 
I'm one of one of the worship songs that God gave me. Yeah. Um, I had it recorded mm-hmm. and uh, sent sent it to Paul Wilbur. So, mm-hmm. and actually, I met him at at uh, National Religious Broadcasters. It was, a, uh, I guess, a convention. Yeah. Right. Right. And I sang it to him, and he liked it, and he mm-hmm. said, "Send me a copy of that." So I need a follow up on that. Right. You know. So I'm going to step back a little bit to the organization that you're with right now. Yeah. Um, I know. What can you tell me again? Global Hope Network International website. G H N I dot org. Mm-hmm. Once again, G H N I dot org. And we'll put a little splash on the screen so people Thank can you. find you a link you. in the thing. So people should go find it. Um, I know that's how we support you, and I know that's how people can support you. So we'll put that in there as Thank well. Thank you. Now tell me a little bit more about the organization, though. Well, Global Hope helps some of the world's poorest villages mm-hmm. by way of food and agricultural training, Mm -hmm. water and wells, Mm -hmm. uh, education for both boys and girls, Mm -hmm. um, income generation, Mm -hmm. and uh, health training. Right. Um, We work in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Um, And we also help Reduce human trafficking. Ah, that's a big deal. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. But I mean, um, we we believe in the principle of teaching people how to fish yeah. rather than handing out fish sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. So we we consider it a success when we can leave a village in three to five years mm-hmm. after helping them in those five areas. Right. Okay. That I mentioned. Okay. And um, we come. We approach it as a partnership, mm-hmm. not. We're the smart Americans. We mm-hmm. feel like we have a lot to learn when we right. go into a country and yeah. we find out what the natural resources are, yeah. what labor is available, what nationals um, that can oversee committees. Yeah. Because we found it's much better to empower people yeah. than to create dependencies. And, that, and that's, that's, that's definitely scriptural, right? I mean, Amen. that's that's definitely something we – and one of the mission, the only mission – yeah, probably the only true mission trip I went on, we studied the book uh, When Help Helping Hurts. Hurts. And yeah. and that was a great book, you know, because you go over there and you're thinking people are poor, right? And you need to help them by giving them stuff or teaching them something that they can't sustain or something like that. Um, but, but when I went, um, the one thing I realized is that they weren't poor to them. To themselves, you know, they don't have what we have, but um, nobody, nobody was really unhappy per se. They were. Make makes, it makes a lot of sense, and in many ways, they are relationally richer. Yeah. Than uh, many Americans. Yeah, I mean, they sang, they, 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 they uh, fellowshiped. There's a stronger sense of community. It, it, and a lot. it was. Yeah, and yeah. I really, it, it, I mean, it transformed me. You know, it may, I, I think it made me a better Christian, you know, had part of the foundational work early on mm-hmm. of, of where I am right now and part of my walk. I'm still heading toward that fully devoted follower of Christ well, designation. You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. Yeah, right. You know, he's still, I love that uh, he says, uh, he who began a good work in yeah. you and in me and yeah. all of his children. Yes. He's faithful to complete it. So yeah. we're still works in progress, aren't we? Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the, so from a missionary standpoint, mm-hmm. um, I know you're not just a missionary, but if, um, but are you full, t- are you full time in this? Well, I mean, how to t- distinguish that for me? Um, I like to fully engage each day Mm -hmm. for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, I've cut back my hours Mm -hmm. as far as, you know, office time, more like about 25 hours a week Mm -hmm. with the various things, whether it's staff care or prayer ministry or writing devotionals or editing field reports. But um, I guess my greatest joy is sharing the gospel. Yeah, I think that the... when you hear when we hear the term missionary, a lot of us think that that means going off to a foreign country and trying to 
put in a system they don't need or something, right? <laughs> Preaching them the word and, and feeding them or something like that. But it's more than that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's I mean, not just that. So. Exactly. And I've done a, a, a little bit of that, you mm-hmm. know. I've mm-hmm. been probably to about 12 nations. But mm-hmm. but our greatest mission field is is where we live, Yeah, you know, because yeah. that's where we spend the bulk of our time. I, You may have seen this at your church or a church. Uh, Various churches, when you leave the building, you're now entering the mission field. Mission field That's yeah. a powerful reminder to us. Yeah. You know, yeah. we have something better than the cure for cancer, mm-hmm. something better than, you know, you could be rich or mm-hmm. you could be a millionaire. We have the greatest news that there is. Right. I know it. I, I, I used to go to BSF and, in, and part of the group that I was in, there was a, a gentleman who had, he had cancer. He was fighting it. And um, he was having a tough time that day. And, you know, everybody was consoling him and supporting him in their own way. But one thing he said, he said, hey, man, I know that God will heal me in this life or the next. But either Love way. Love that attitude. Yeah. And and that, I don't know, that just kind of, I'll never forget that moment. Because I think for me, it just embedded this peace that even if this gentleman can find that peace in his toughest moment, you know, what am I complaining about? Thank right? you. Right. Right. So what at the end of the day, we're all going to be that we are going to be healed in this life or next. So he can do what he wants yes. and and he can heal us now or later or later. Yeah. yeah. I like to think of it as the heavenly healing. Yeah. Yeah. You that's know? good. That's good. I like that. Mary, I thank you for saying with me. You have any questions for me? Is there anything I can do, say to anyone to help support your? I'm ju- I'm just going to say your missionary activity. Oh, thank you. <laughs> your music, thank your you. devotionals, thank anyway. You. Anyway, um, <laughs> well, if you visit the website, yeah, ghni.org, yeah. Um, if you want to support the work, yeah, you can um, look for the donate button, yeah, and. Uh, I'm under staff. Okay. So okay, we'll find. We'll put your. You have a direct link. Like we can put a slash or find you direct. Whatever we can do technology wise, we will get people to your you. site. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to say thank you, and thank you for joining us on the Chronicles of Lesson Mom. It's truly been a joy. Thank you, Les. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>